Hello, this is David Newman. Welcome to the Orchestral Tools Instrumentation Series. Today we're going to speak about the horns, the French horns. Uh, the French horns are in Hollywood, in film music, an absolute uh, mainstay, as they are in concert music, but they hold a particular uh, place in, in film music historically as well as now. I mean, you can go back to really to Korngold, who came to Los Angeles in, uh, from Vienna, vis-a-vis -vis Vienna in um, 1934, uh, to do Mitzvah Dream, and then in 1935 he did his first big swashbuckler, which was um, Captain Blood, for this glorious use use of the horn as almost a kind of hunting instrument, but just this kind of Straussian uh, use of horns. And it's kind of funny because in the 60s, big orchestra scores kind of went out of vogue, but with the advent then, of course, of Star Wars, which was a huge brass score. Uh, it, it just came roaring back. And to this day, I mean, you think of Hans's Simmer scores, uh, any large uh, action uh, Marvel score now, it's, it's all very much horn driven. Um, though the horn can do more things than just playing loud in triads and in thirds or in unison, and it, it can do a lot of other stuff as well. It has a, it has a very interesting low range as well um, that is used actually quite a bit in film music in dramatic sequences. So let's dive a little bit more into the French horn. The French horn consists of the mouthpiece, which is attached to the tubing with the valves. The valves are played by the left hand and affect the pitch by routing the air into different sections of the tubing. Some instruments have a bell that can be taken off for easy handling. Like on the other instruments of the brass section, the tone is produced by pressing the lips against each other and then blowing. This buzzing sound is amplified by the instrument. Ever since the invention of valves, the horn has been one of the composer's favorite instruments. It represents the perfect connection between woodwinds and brass because of its soft sound. Therefore, it is notated between the bassoons and trumpets in written scores. The horn has a very large range. It can easily play all dynamic levels from pianissimo to blaring fortissimo in all registers with just a few limitations. It sounds soft, wide, romantic, conveys noble strength, as well as images of great distance or of majestic seriousness. According to its provenance as a hunting instrument, certain figures and melodies can be played very fast since they suit the specific instrument very well. For example, in Siegfried, the opera of Richard Wagner. The use in the orchestra is just as versatile. Multiple horns in unison are often used for large lines, alone, or in combination with cello lines. Horn solos are very popular and sound noble, sublime, or elegant. In addition, straight from the late Romanticism, a horn set of four or even six instruments is often used as a harmony support of the orchestra, where the horns hold the underlying harmonies of the played passages by playing of shorter or longer sustained chords. The range of the modern French horn, which is the common horn in the orchestra, is from B1 to F5, or B0 to F4, after the MIDI definition used in our sample instruments. Because the range of the French horn is very big, professional horn players are specialized to play high, or low horn. When using four horns, generally the first and third players are the high players, and the second and fourth are the low players. The lower register sounds rather mellow when played piano. In forte, it can sound very rough. This register is typically used for chords supporting the played melodies, or for specific effects of horror or pictures of conflict or fight. The dynamics are limited here. The loudest is a powerful forte, but not fortissimo.
In the middle register, the horn sounds resounding, often used for description of wide nature, scenes of big meaning, or heroic character. Played piano, it can give the impression of things or persons which are far away. The dynamics are virtually unlimited. The upper register provides a bright and intense sound. Even played fortissimo, the sound remains powerful without getting too shrill. Often, it's used for scenes of fight, danger, or need. The vibrato is more often used in contemporary context rather than in classical music. It's created by movements in lips, diaphragm, and larynx. Single and triple tonguing are common techniques of the horn, just like with the other brass instruments. Using the tongue to start the airstream by articulating a ta gives a certain articulation. Depending on the speed of the music, double tonguing with taka or even triple tonguing with an articulated taka ka is necessary. Articulating a rolled R produces a technique which is called flutter tonguing. By pressing the right hand into the bell, the character of the instrument changes to a rather dark timbre. The pitch of the instrument increases by a half tone. This special character is mostly used for mystic, scary, or mad evil images. The glissando on the horn is produced by playing all the notes between the starting and destination note in a very connected fashion, as opposed to sliding between them. Best to perform in the upper register where the partials are closer together. By increasing the lip tension, a very brassy, powerful, strength sound character can be achieved, a technique used in corresponding passages which is called cuvilla. Horn mutes are mostly made out of wood. They create an extremely tight and narrow sound. Playing with mutes is possible from pianissimo to mezzo piano. It sounds very distant and mystic.
As you can see, the French horn is a very important instrument in film music and can be used in a variety of ways. Keep watching for more videos.